A warship that makes admirals breathe easier and enemies think twice opens with presents, not promises. The first impression is hull and hunger, a long, purposeful 140-meter silhouette throwing a clean wake at 20-plus knots, a flight deck that says bring the helicopter now, a mission bay that looks like a stage waiting for the next act. That is Type 31, Inspiration Class, built on the Arrowhead 140 blueprint and tuned for the Royal Navy to deliver hard utility per pound, day after day, patrol after patrol. It is the kind of frigate that starts earning its keep the moment the lines are slipped because the fundamentals are baked in with almost impolite clarity, a big, sea kindly hull, honest range, open architecture brains, and growth space everywhere you look. Length comes in at roughly 140 meters with a beam near 20 meters and a draft in the mid 5 meter range, a geometry that buys long legged stability in North Atlantic weather and the volume to host real aviation and mission spaces without compromise. Standard displacement sits around the mid-5,000 ton mark, edging higher when fully loaded with fuel, ammunition, and embarked teams. The machinery is a CODAD arrangement, for economical diesels driving two shafts through reduction gearboxes with controllable pitch propellers, selected because navies live on availability and fuel curves, not brochure poetry. Top speed pushes into the height 20s and knots for a sprint to station, while the economical crew stretches to many thousands of nautical miles, the kind of range that lets a captain hold a box for weeks rather than days. A bow thruster eases close-in handling in tight ports and alongside RAS rigs, and the hull form itself descends from northern design DNA known for stiff sea-keeping and dry decks, which means sensors keep working and flight ops keep happening when lesser ships are heaving and shutting down. The crew model is lean, smart, and expandable. A core ship's company of roughly a hundred sailors runs the whole day-to-day, -day, enabled by condition-based maintenance, digital diagnostics, and modern ergonomics on the bridge and in the operations room. Accommodation margins allow the headcount to surge into the 150-plus bracket when the mission demands it, whether that means boarding teams for embargo enforcement, an aviation detachment with engineers and weapons handlers, unmanned systems operators setting up consoles in the mission spaces, or a specialist staff embarked for task group duties. Habitability is not a garnish but a weapon, because a small crew doing long patrols performs at its best only when the ship respects sleep, food, and space. The Inspiration class layout reflects that with decent cabins, messes that avoid industrial gloom, and reconfigurable compartments that turn from gym to workshop as needed. Armament tracks the general purpose brief with the right kind of bite. The forward mount is a 57mm gun, a modernized workhorse with a high rate of fire and programmable 3P ammunition that can be tuned shot by shot for airburst against drones solid against small boats, and smart effects against cluttered littoral targets. It is flanked by a pair of 40mm mounts that widen the close-in envelope against fast attack craft and low flyers, giving the command team layered options when the horizon gets busy. The air defense nucleus is CMM, Sea Scepter, soft-launched from compact canisters that avoid brutal deck blast and permit flexible sighting. The ready-to-fire loadout delivers point and local area protection for self and consorts, and the architecture leaves weight and real estate for additional vertical launch cells if a future spiral calls for longer-range SAMs or a mixed magazine with land attack or anti-ship weapons. That growth roadmap is not a slide deck flourish, it is wired into the cooling, power, and data trunk so upgrades land like planned evolution instead of open-heart surgery. Sensors carry the same clarity. A rotating 4D AESA radar sits high, fusing air and surface tracks with enough refresh and discrimination to build a trustworthy picture in weather, clutter, and a sky littered with small, cheap threats. Electro-optical directors contribute positive ID and gunnery cues without broadcasting with radar, and a modern navigation radar suite stitches the close-in world with precision. The combat system rides on open standards, with a combat management core derived from proven European families that know how to talk Link 16, Link 22, national networks, and coalition data pipes without throwing tantrums. Baseline anti-submarine sensors are deliberately modest to control cost and complexity, 
but the ship is plumbed and powered to accept a towed array or integrate off-board USVs and UUVs for barrier ops, mine countermeasures, or deep ASW when the mission demands it. Electronic warfare is handled by contemporary ES suites and soft kill decoys that throw both active and passive confusion into an inbound seeker's mind, because in the age of saturation and swarm, soft kill is often the first and last line around a frigate's skin. A modern surface combatant lives by its aviation and mission spaces, and Type 31 leans hard into that truth. The flight deck is Merlin capable supporting heavyweight maritime helicopters with dipping sonar, torpedoes, and stores for long sorties, while the hangar is sized and serviced to host either a Merlin HM-2 or a Wildcat HMA-2 with the tools and spare parts that keep turnarounds tight. The deck markings and structural strength make occasional heavy lift drop-ins feasible when the plan calls for moving pallets quickly. From the first steel, the class has embraced rotary wing UAVs, with clearances and handling systems that allow small unmanned aircraft to provide persistent ISR, over-the-horizon queuing, and communications relay. Under the flight deck and amidships, the mission bay is the beating heart, lanes for ISO containers, overhead handling gear, workshops, and side doors tied to davits for rapid launch and recovery. In practical terms, that means four ribs are not a fantasy on paper but a real-world boarding machine, and it means containerized modules for unmanned MCM, hydrography, disaster relief stores, or extra palletized magazines roll on without redesigning the ship each time the mission changes. The industrial story puts steel behind strategy. Block construction and digital shipbuilding methods pull lessons from commercial yards to stabilize cost and schedule. Commonality with the Arrowhead 140 family means parts pipelines, training syllabi, and upgrade packages benefit from a broader community than a bespoke one-off design could ever command. The Royal Navy's five ship by, Venture, Active, Bulldog, Campbellton, Formidable, lands not just hulls but also a repeatable production rhythm, an export narrative that matters to allies looking to recapitalize escorts, and a domestic yard workforce that climbs a learning curve instead of reinventing it on each unit. Export success in sister programs means more operators discovering the same fit-for-purpose balance, which, in turn, returns dividends in shared doctrine, interoperability, and co-funded upgrades over the life of the class. Roles mapped for the Type 31 reflect reality at sea rather than theory ashore. On independent patrol, it provides presence with teeth, boarding smugglers in the morning and escorting a vulnerable merchant in the afternoon. In a task group, it thickens the screen, throws out another air defense bubble with sea scepter, adds gunnery and EO coverage against drone raids at short notice, and frees exquisite ASW or AAW escorts to sit closer to the high-value unit. In Grey Zone games, it shows up early and stays late, its mission bay shifting week by week from extra ribs for persistent visit board search seizure to unmanned vehicles for ink spot surveillance off a restless coastline. In humanitarian relief, the flight deck, cranes, boats, and hospital spaces deliver water, food, and medical aid with the dignity and tempo that earn a navy its reputation. That breadth is not an accident, it is what happens when a big enough hull is paired with systems that scale and a cost that invites frequent use. Survivability runs deeper than plate thickness. The parent hull form has seen heavy weather and appreciates the physics of sea keeping, reducing structural loads, slamming, and the miserable fatigue that breaks crews and gear long before battle damage ever arrives. Compartmentation, redundancy, and modern firefighting reflect NATO lessons and wargame truths rather than nostalgic layouts. The soft-launch CMM architecture keeps flame and overpressure off decks where people, sensors, and helicopters live. Decoys and electronic support measures are positioned for 360-degree coverage, and the combat system's distributed design avoids a single rack or room whose loss would blind the ship. None of it claims invincibility, all of it adds minutes and options in a fight, and minutes and options are what turn near misses into non-events and hard knocks into recoveries. Numbers matter, so the specification sheet deserves to land with weight. Length about 140 m, beam about 20m, 
draft around 5.5 m, displacement roughly 5,700 to 6,000 tons in typical load. Propulsion code add on two shafts, for main diesels sized in a several megawatt bracket each, giving a maximum speed around 28 knots and a range measured in the 8,000,9,000,000 nautical mile class at economical cruise. Electrical power margin sized with growth in mind for future sensors and directed energy or high-duty radars should they arrive. Crew baseline about 100 with accommodation for 160 plus depending on detachment mix. Armament baseline 1 by 57 mm forward mount, 2 by 40 mm mounts for close and defense, a sea scepter battery of canistered CMM missiles for point and local area air defense, small caliber mounts and remote weapon stations as required, with reserved deck space and services for additional VLS and dedicated anti ship missiles on future spirals. Sensors include a modern rotating 4D AESA air slash surface search radar, navigation radars, EO slash IR directors, and an open architecture combat management system integrating tactical data links and national crypto. Aviation includes a Merlin slash Wildcat capable flight deck, hangar, embarked weapons magazines, and support shops, plus clearances for rotary wing UAVs. Mission bay sized for multiple ISO containers, for ribs, and containerized unmanned systems with side access and handling gear to match. Defensive aids include soft kill decoy launchers, electronic support measures, and electronic attack options depending on fit. The software soul matters as much as the steel skeleton. Open architecture combat management means the class is not waiting five year cycles to gain new tricks. Counter UAS toolkits, automated track fusion, target recognition aids, and refined doctrine packages ride in as software increments. Interface standards and middleware choices avoid the classic trap where every new sensor is a six-month integration saga. Cyber hygiene is treated like watertight integrity, with zone networks, monitored boundaries, and the ability to segment and fight the ship with degraded systems if a network event tries to spread. Platform management systems watch the heartbeat of machinery, predicting failures and scheduling maintenance windows that respect the ship's operational tempo instead of dragging it by the nose. For the Royal Navy, the inspiration class is a fleet-level lever. It restores escort mass without pretending every hull must be a paragon of specialization. A navy that only buys jewels ends up guarding the jewels instead of using them, a navy that only buys bargains discovers the bill comes due in combat. The Type 31 sits between those cliffs with uncommon poise. It is affordable enough to show up forward in numbers, survivable enough to ride out bad days at sea, and adaptable enough to keep pace with threat curves that bend faster each year. It complements high-end air defense and ASW frigates by absorbing the grind that would otherwise burn their hours, which, paradoxically, raises the availability of those exquisite ships for the moments that really count. Export gravity adds momentum. When Allied navies sail variants of the same hull, exercises stop being theory labs and become rehearsals for shared operations. Tactics migrate across languages because the consoles and displays rhyme. Supply chains get thicker. Training pipelines make sense to a broader talent pool. Upgrades are argued, trialed, and funded by more than one budget, which often means they actually happen. The Arrowhead 140 family is already benefiting from this effect, and the Royal Navy's choice to ride that wave puts the Type 31 on a path where improvement is a habit, not a hope. The story ends where it began, on presence and hunger. A frigate earns relevance by being there, by staying there, and by maturing when the plan changes without warning. The inspiration class wears that discipline in its lines. It leaves the yard with a credible, layered self-defense suite, guns that speak fluently to the age of drones and fast boats, and a combat system that plays well with a coalition. It carries a flight deck that makes helicopters and UAVs feel at home, a mission bay that turns today's idea into tonight's capability, and margins that promise tomorrow's upgrades will fit without tearing the ship apart. It is a hull with reach, a brain with room to grow, 
and a price that invites commanders to use it hard. In an era when the ocean is crowded with cheap sensors, sharp missiles, and unpredictable actors, that balance is not just prudent, it is powerful. Type 31 does not chase headlines. It accumulates effects, patrol by patrol, exercise by exercise, crisis by crisis, until the quiet math of presence tips the board. That is how a modern general-purpose frigate holds the line for a navy that must be global, credible, and ready, and that is why this class will feel indispensable faster than anyone expects.